In this video, we'll discuss the scotomas, why visual field analysis is done. The visual field analysis is done to decide whether a lesion is before or behind the optic chasma. Which scotomas are confined to one eye and what's the reason for that? Or scotoma confined to one eye must be due to a lesion anterior to optic chiasma involving either optic nerve or retina. Which scotomas are monoocular? The monoocular prechiasmal scotomas are central, secocentral, arcuate and altitude scotomas. Which scotomas are binocular? The binocular scotomas are postchiasmal scotomas and they include junctional scotoma, bitemporal, homonymous hemianopia, superior quadrant anopia, inferior quadrant anopia and homonymous hemianopia with macular spearing. Which lesion causes central scotomas? Damage to the macula causes a central scotoma. If the blind spot is enlarged, it causes constriction of the peripheral visual field also. A superior nasal lesion or superior nasal retinal detachment results in inferior temporal visual field effect. When secocentral scotomas develop, this is the secocentral scotoma, about half the fibers in the optic nerve originate from the ganglion cells serving the macula. Damage to papillomacular fiber causes secocentral scotomas. So what are the causes of the secocentral scotoma? They develop with temporal pallor and they include optic neuritis, nutritional optic neuropathy, toxic optic neuropathy, labor hereditary optic neuropathy, compressive optic neuropathy. It is important to note that normally temporal pallor is more than the nasal pallor. What causes altitude scotoma? Entire upper or lower pole of the optic disc damage causes altitude scotoma that follows the horizontal meridian. Typically they occur in ischemic optic neuropathy but also occur from retinal vascular occlusion, advanced glaucoma and optic neuritis. What are arcuate scotomas? The arcuate scotomas are formed in glaucoma, optic neuritis, ischemic optic neuropathy, optic disc drusen and branch retinal artery or vein occlusion. Glaucoma selectively destroys axon in the superior and inferior temporal region of the optic disc resulting in arcuate scotoma. The arc Arcuate scotoma emanate from the blind spot and curve around fixation to end flat against the horizontal meridian. Now we, uh, we move on to binocular scotomas. Binocular scotomas are post chiasmal. They include junctional, bitemporal, homonymous hemianopia, superior inferior quadrant hemianopia, and homonymous hemianopia with macular spearing. So what's junctional scotoma and when does it occur? The tumors anterior to the optic chiasma produces junctional scotomas and is characterized by optic neuropathy in one eye and superior temporal field cut in the other eye. Superior temporal cut in the other eye. The bitemporal hemianopia affecting the temporal size of both eye occurs in the optic chiasmal lesion usually in the tumors of the pituitary gland. The homonymous hemianopia affecting same size of the both eye. The right homonymous hemianopia affecting the right side that is nasal side in one eye and the temporal side in the other eye. In the left homonymous hemianopia the temporal side on the left side and the nasal side on the right eye. The mere loop damage in the temporal lobe causes superior retinal quadrant myenopia. The mere loop carries the inferior quadrant retinal fibers but represents the superior quadrant retinal visual fields. And the inferior fibers that carry inferior quadrant retinal fiber they cause the lower quadrant retinal visual field defect. This mere loop defect is known as the pie in the sky and this one lower one is known as the eye in the floor. Damage in the parietal lobe causes inferior retinal quadrant homonymous hemianopia. This is the occipital lobe lesion causes homonymous hemianopia. The left occipital lobe lesion causes right homonymous hemianopia. Homonymous hemianopia due to occipital lobe lesions, pupil and fundus are normal. 